Um, can you hear me? Can you guys hear me or not? <laughs> okay, so you can? Okay, wow. I'm scared. Okay. Um, oh, hello, William. Okay, so I've never done a live before, and I'm home alone. Well, I probably shouldn't say that on a live, but <sighs> I'm bored. So just ask me a question. Oh, God. All right, you guys are going to see my true social anxiety here. Um, okay. So, I have a question. Do you think guys repressing their anger too much can make them less attractive? Um, yes, I do. Because if you don't have, like, access to your anger, how are you going to basically, like, compete against other guys? Okay, yes, you can have some, like, in incredible, like, negotiation skills. You can be extremely calm and mature. But, uh, I don't know, anger can really come in handy. And it's highly attractive. Wow. <laughs> Great question. Yeah, I have to warm up talking because I'm, like, so nervous just being on a live stream. Uh, maybe I'll just sit here quietly. Okay, cover platypus says he has a question. All right, please ask it. I feel like you were left feeling bummed out or criticized by ARC. You know what? I was. Um, just a little bit because I kind of thought we were friends and um, we we're Facebook friends and stuff and like messaging on there. And um, it's just that like he, he loved a lot of really harsh, in my opinion, comments about me. And he said stuff like, hashtag real talk, hashtag like, that's right, hashtag like, you know it. And I'm kind of like, oh, so, yeah. Okay. Does attraction help for a guy when a woman is already interested in you? even if she's unable to act on it because she's in a relationship. Even if she's unable to act on it because she's in a relationship. Could you go more into detail about that? Cause like, give me an example or something. And uh, thanks for being here guys. Yeah, I just had like a spur of the moment desire to just come on here. Um, but yeah, I'm really nervous actually, so I'm not really good at talking to people like this. Okay. Question. Do you think too many male, too many partners, male or female, ruins a person's ability to have a long-term relationship? No, I don't. Um, so like... Do I think if a woman has too many partners, it ruins her ability to have a long-term relationship? I don't at all. Like the people I know who have had the most sex, I'm thinking of women. Um, the person I'm thinking of, she still says she is a romantic and she could give it all up at any moment for a monogamous relationship. That's kind of how I feel too, because 
the desire for like a deep connection, I think is very, very deep for women. And no matter if you're exploring, checking things off your sexual bucket list, um, it's not going to go away. Like it's very, very deep. And um, yeah, like people talk about pair bonding and stuff, but it's like, you are going to be more discerning because you're going to have more experience about who's right for you, but does it make you incapable of forming like a monogamous relationship? I don't think so. Oh, God. All right. So. All right. You guys can also like write in the comments if you want, like if I'm doing this right. And give me some tips on that, too, because I have, like, no idea what I'm doing. Okay, are there going to be any fireworks under the sheets tonight? <laughs> um, my boyfriend's not here, so no. Okay, what does my non-leather mean? I am vegan, and I don't wear animal skins. I don't eat animals. I don't use animal products. And, um, I kind of like started this whole YouTube channel. I think I started it like talking about my raw vegan journey when I used to be a raw vegan. So yeah, it's a vegan name. But then like I made that one video basically, well, I was just making videos about whatever, but then when, um, this one video I made, made went viral, I just realized, wow, maybe I should just specialize in, uh, talking about dating tips for men because that seems to be what's like making my channel grow um i liked your escalator of arousal diagram thank you guys go from zero to 100 so easy you're so right like i've been thinking about it more and i'm like uh why didn't i see this before like it's so true um okay let's see In the video you made about men having raw hidden energy, is there a movie that can serve as an example? You know, I've really been wanting to make like a compilation video because, um, yes, there's a movie, but it's like so common that, I mean, it's not really like displayed in a character. It's more just like the actor himself. So I see a lot of examples of it on TikTok just in like girls filming their relationships with their boyfriends and just in certain things they do. I'm like, that's it. That's it. So I really want to make like a, what's it called? Like a, a montage basically of all these different, different clips. But the problem is like when I, when I try to think about it, I'm like, this is so subtle. I wonder if anyone else is going to see it or I'm just going to play it and it's going to look like nothing to them. But then like these same videos have like, a million likes so I'm like okay something and I think it's the same thing that's resonating with me is resonating with other people but when you look at it like it almost looks like nothing like I showed it to my boyfriend some of these clips where I'm like do you see it do you see it and he's kind of like uh not really but it's like very obvious to me but maybe because he's not a girl so all right isn't that a open relationship? So can you explain what you're referring to there? Um, so she was into me. I was into her. Then she said, you are already expecting a lot from this where I'm not. She also said, I would love to meet. Should I text her or wait for hers? Um, in general. Okay. So I'm not really completely secure on this situation, but in general, Text her. Don't wait for hers. Um, most girls are taking female dating advice, which is basically all. Like, if I ever see some female dating advice that says something different than this, I'm like, wow, I need to learn more. But basically, 99% is do not text him. It is the man's job to text you. Never initiate. You are a queen. So never chase 
And I realize it's kind of similar for men too, so yeah. But a lot of these girls, if you don't text them, you'll be waiting forever. And they'll be sitting at home waiting for you to text. <sighs> and then she'll just be saying to herself, if he wanted to, he would. Um, how much darkness can a man realistically expect his partner to accommodate? What do you mean by darkness? Please go into more detail on that juicy question. Can white-collar women have a lasting relationship with a blue-collar guy? I'd say definitely yes. Like, I feel like this is a huge fantasy for women. Like, this is what many, many romance novels are about. I mean, yeah, there's going to be, like, cultural differences, I guess, but that can be very hot. And I think that's what a lot of women find hot about a blue-collar guy. And, you know, the relationship itself, I feel like the lasting part is going to depend on, like, your communication skills and, um, I guess, your compatibility and which ones are more important or less important to you. But just tell me why you think, like, they couldn't have a lasting relationship. Like, what would be the issue there? Um... You lived in NYC. What do you think of the NYC dating scene? Okay. Well, I know, like, the typical answer is, like, oh, it's a hellscape and stuff. I mean, it's... I don't know. Like, it's... I feel like it would be the same anywhere. I don't really know because I haven't really dated anywhere. Well, I actually did. Like, when I would go on trips and stuff, I would use Tinder. But, um... I, did, I lived in NYC for like 10 years or something, so all my 20s, so I basically dated all my 20s in NYC. Now I'm on Tinder for research, and I do notice like a big difference where I am now um, versus the profiles in NYC. Like the people look, you know, a lot of, there's like a lot of models and like people with extremely put together Tinder profiles in NYC. Um, whereas here, it's kind of more, just take a selfie and, like, put it up. But, I don't really know. Like, I feel like it's probably the same everywhere. Um, with just, like, the NYC dating scene, like, oh, there's always someone better. And, I don't know, people find relationships in NYC. And I feel like it's kind of the same. Um, what do you think, Chris Puppet? Is getting emotionally attached a bad thing? No. Um, well, I mean, obviously it depends, okay? But, like, in a relationship that is so... Like, let's say you want a relationship. Um, it is definitely not a bad thing. I mean, that is going to be one of the number one things women crave is they're going to want you to be emotionally attached because that's how this deep, passionate connection is going to be created. Like, if you don't have that, and if you don't have the capability for a deep love, then um, it's just, there's going to be no spark. Like, you're going to get divorced, let's just say. Let's just put it that way. So, obviously, it can be a bad thing. Like, if you get emotionally attached to the wrong person, but... Okay, how are you vegan and you put meat in your mouth? Very funny. Um, okay. Wait a second. What sheet music is that in the background? Um, it's like a classic rock fake book. And Hannon, which is like these finger exercises. I just started taking piano lessons again. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, polygamy is the way. Um, okay, that's interesting. Why do you say that? I'm open to thoughts on that. Thoughts on Fresh and Fit podcast. You know, okay, I really need to listen to a full episode because one guy told me, um, check out, like, Andrew Tate. Oh my god, that's the next question. 
thoughts on Andrew Tate. So I don't really understand because I only watched this. Is he like a regular on the show? But I watched like 15 minutes of him on the Fresh and Fit podcast. And this guy recommended me to watch this because he was like, oh, he just masters dominance, doesn't he? But the thing is, I was like totally repulsed at like everything he was saying. I was just like cackling because it was so bad. Because he's just, in my opinion, like he was just telegraphing like insecurity. It wasn't like a calm, grounded confidence. It was more just like a poser confidence. And it was very obvious. So I need to know more like, what's the deal with Andrew Tate? Like, who is he? I need variety. Um, Good. Like, I'm glad you can admit that to yourself, accept it. That's huge. And I hope you get it. Mickey Rourke in the 80s. Okay, I'm going to have to YouTube that because I don't, I'm not like totally familiar with him. Um, okay. What are your thoughts on women are to be shared by one man and man to sleep with as many women as he can? Um, so like, as a sexual fantasy, I think it's totally fine. As like a law of nature, no. I don't agree. Um, okay. What do you think about that? Look up the dark triad for how to be a dominant man. I've heard about the dark triad before. I need a refresher on that. Um, yeah, feel free to elaborate. So like if women can't see you as a, oh, okay. Like, if women can't see you as a sexual option, but if they see another woman was already interested in you, but nothing happened because of bad timing. So women can't see, oh, but they see another woman was already interested in you, but nothing happened because of bad timing. Well, that helped them change their mind about you. So basically, women can't see you. They see another woman was already interested in you. Um, if women see another woman is interested in you, it is a good thing. Like, it is always a good thing. It's kind of like a classic, you know, trick in the book. And it's good. I agree. It's very good. You want it for sure. Um, it helps. Do you play piano? Like, I'm taking lessons and I'm trying to get better. Um, did you start this YouTube channel because you couldn't get a career in your field or is this a genuine passion for you? Um, it was more kind of like a self-expression thing. Like, I was just making random videos about my thoughts because I'm kind of like a overthinking person who likes to just share my ideas but it kind of became like a passion because I don't know if you guys know this but I had this thing called like the rejection club and um it's basically it was based on this guy like 100 days of rejection Jia Jang and you basically asked like a totally outrageous question like um hey can I have this banana for free like at a store and you hope that they say no and then you get desensitized rejection so then when you go for what you really want like an audition per se um you're not afraid of rejection so you can actually ask but what ended up happening was a lot of guys i noticed like a lot of guys were coming and I noticed like one of the questions I would have like a list I would bring of like a hundred rejection challenges. And then one of the ones on the list was like, ask a girl out. And a lot of the guys were like focusing on that one. And I realized, wow, like, oh my God, like guys cannot ask a girl out. Like, um, and I kind of just, it just opened my eyes to like shyer, more sensitive men. I had the same blind spot that I talked about in my blind spot video. And I became, like, really fascinated by the topic. Um, 
then a friend of mine actually committed suicide because of problems with this. And so then it became like an even deeper passion for me. And also I just always been like really interested in understanding, I guess you could say the male mind just because of um, like my dating struggles, just wondering like what guys were thinking and trying to understand them. And um, I was always like really fascinated by it. So it's a passion. Um, but yeah, like dating tips for men. Um, Cause I'm kind of more interested in like understanding men f- for my own sake rather than giving tips to them. But I don't know. Okay. Happy fourth. Thank you. Um, maybe you can add commentary to point it out for us guys. Can you, what do you mean add commentary on, on what? So when a woman says, I feel like we've grown apart during a breakup, does this seem legit? It could be legit, but that's like very vague and it could cover, you know, a lot. Like why does she feel you have grown apart? Like, do you have any sense of that? I mean, you probably did grow apart. Like she probably did feel like disconnected, but it's like, why did she feel disconnected? I mean, she's probably just keeping it vague, you know? Um, yeah. What do you think about that? So then Monk Mind says, one video you said like it's not as complicated as uniting the heart with the penis kind of thing, as they say in Tantra. I think you were getting at confidence being the most important thing for guys. Okay, well, it's just that I do follow a lot of these polarity people for entertainment. And I don't know, my personal feelings about it are that they are kind of trying to shy away from just telling it like it is, which is talking about sex talking about sexuality and they're kind of trying to make it more palatable for people who are scared of sex and not really like wanting to see themselves as kinky or which is what I would call it and so they kind of try to couch it in all this really like abstract vague language and it kind of ends up confusing people because like what I feel like they're trying to teach guys, for example, is just to be confident, like you're saying, and dominant. But instead, they'll kind of just say, all right, you have to have presence and you have to just be very still and you have to just hold your body in this like incredibly still position. And it's like, no, you don't. No, you don't. And it's just crazy. Like you're kind of just forcing guys to do this, you know, fake version of dominance and just, I mean, guys don't need to be still to be dominant um, or to see masculine. But I think it could help someone if somebody's like way towards the other side of the spectrum. Like it can be like a good starting point, but you don't want to end up just staring like straight into space and trying to become consciousness and you know, sit in this, like, weird, stilted position. So that's kind of what I was saying there. Um, Can you play something on the piano? No. Um, (laughs) Okay. So Monk Mind says truth was, I don't know if that was towards what I was saying, but can a quiet guy create sexual tension with a woman even though he is quiet? Yes, absolutely. Um, the strong, silent type, um, very, very common trope in romance novels. Um, I just say that because, like, it's a type that lots of women are attracted to and lots of women are even fantasizing about. Um, like, a typical, like, romance novel trope is he'll be, like, a horse trainer and, like, he won't say much. But, like, he's really good with horses because he's kind of, like, quiet and sensitive. But he's got, like, all this raw physical 
passion like coursing within. Um, so yeah. And yeah, I mean, I feel like sexual chemistry comes from a place beyond words. It probably comes from like body language and like animal magnetism and stuff. So yeah, well, at least partially. Um, so not texting her is bad advice. Okay, well, that's kind of broad. Like, in general, you should be initiating the text as the guy. But there's different strategies and methods. Like, you can pick your poison and you can go for your pickup, you know, approach of, like, being chased or... I mean, you could be over texting her and just going, hi, hi, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. And that would be bad. But in general, you want to be initiating. Look up shadow work also. Need to integrate your dark side and shadow. Carl Young. Okay, well, makes sense. Like, Tell me more what you were thinking there. In general, I have no problem with that. What are your thoughts on Amber Heard? So I didn't really, like, keep up, unfortunately. Um, okay. I have to scroll back here. Um, just know I think you're cute. Thanks, Danny. That's really nice of you. Life's a drag. Um, why is that, Joel? Please say more. So if a girl is visiting with you alone and she volunteers that she likes it rough, is there an accepted way of figuring out her yes, no, maybe? Well, I think the accepted way is you could say, okay, green means keep going. Yellow means pause and check in and discuss. And red means hard stop. That's kind of like the kink way of doing it. But you could discuss with her a little more, like, what kind of rough do you like? Like, are we talking hair pulling? Are we talking fighting? Are we talking hand on the throat? Like, there's... You know, try to get her to, like, talk about it a little. Um, yeah, because she's probably into something, you know? Is she talking about, like, degradation, dirty talk? Like, there's a wide range, so I would try to, like, get her to open up a little before just, like, going into it because, you know, you could do something that she hates. So, yeah. Um, by darkness, I mean someone who has had a lot of trauma, which has in turn made them cynical, nihilistic, etc. How much of this negativity can a man reasonably expect his partner to put up with? Well, just in my opinion, I think it really depends. I mean, different women are going to have different capacities for that. But, hmm, yeah, nihilistic is pretty intense, though. Cynical, I mean, like, I can get pretty cynical at times. I don't know. I don't know. It's going to vary, obviously. That wasn't a very good answer, but what do you think, right? Brady Brady. So, do you like men that smile a lot? Um, for me, like, the whole smiling thing, like, it really depends on whether it's genuine, like, if that's, if he is happy a lot, then he's smiling, that's fine. But if he's just forcing a smile because he's kind of into positive vibes only, like, personally, I really don't like that. Um, 
yeah, but that's me personally. I'm sure other girls like feel differently about that. So how to create a spark for attraction if you're an introverted guy? Well, as an introvert myself, like I feel really attracted like to introverts. Like I don't feel there's a problem there because, you know, there's a lot of strengths of being an introvert. Like, I don't know if it's offensive to say like you're deeper. <laughs> um, and so you can kind of like feel out, you know, what who she is I guess is what I'm trying to say and that's like a huge aphrodisiac like for me like um recently like I don't want to reveal too much but like I started feeling a lot of attract attraction to this introverted guy because he was constantly complimenting me like in a really deep authentic way like he just really saw me and by that I mean like I mean I don't know if he actually saw me or if he was just complimenting me but um like he noticed things about me and he just was like so positive and appreciative and he noticed things that like other people wouldn't notice and he just seemed so enthusiastic about that and like just that was like enough to create a huge spark um yeah, and I feel like that's a skill that introverts, like, totally excel at way more than extroverts. It's, like, really noticing the things that other people overlook. And that's, like, a big part of what a girl's looking for. And it's not just, like, on an emotional level. It becomes, like, sexual, too. Um, yeah, if you do it well enough, it can become sexual. <laughs> Um, hate breed, IDK, but it is unacceptable in here. What does that mean? Okay, maybe that was... Okay, explain Explain what that means, please, Danny R. Have you watched the movie Bliss? I haven't. Um, can you explain what's good about that movie? Um, wow, this is the first time I'm live here. Quite a shoop fa. Um, same. Yeah, it's very, very weird for me, but... Thank you guys for being here and for asking so many questions. Like, I really appreciate it. I'm having fun. Hopefully this isn't totally boring to you, but if it is, I guess you can just leave. So, yeah. Um, I don't do emotional vulnerable connection, the danger rust. Okay, why is that the danger rust? Please say more. Um, what kind of music do you enjoy? This question like always strikes fear into my heart um i can't answer it i don't know why all right sorry about that oh samir Batia. hello i recognize you and i'm so glad you're here jen marie vegan myself yes go vegan thank you jen go vegan to other people you're already vegan so so, hey, Victoria, do you know Casey Zander's Uncle C? So, I thought Casey Zander, yeah, he is Uncle C, right? Yeah, I watched, like, one video of his, but, um, yeah, like, I should probably watch some more. I heard some gossip about him lately from my friend. Um, what do you think of Uncle C? Um, Sam L. Williams, I'm happy you enjoyed the song I wrote about you. Yes, that was amazing. Thank you, Sam. I, um, tell me in the comments, like, am I supposed to be just reading out everything like I'm doing? Yeah, give me some tips on that. What do most people do on lives? Um, so, Path of the Heart, Healing Heart. Hey, I love you. Thank you for all the videos. Thank you so much for saying that and commenting as well. Matt W, if your lady doesn't see you as a 9, 10 out of 10 all the time, it's basically over. You find your one when that level stays up. With many women, it doesn't. Um, yeah, I guess you could say that because, um, yeah, like the one, I think most women are going to want to consider you overall, all things considered, at least a nine. 
So, um, Anthony Draw says, I don't bother with F and F Man School 202 all the way. Okay, is that another male podcast? Um, Joel Armour. A man will let a woman down and she will think little of him, and a woman will never be the sole lust of a man. It is all a ruse. Okay, yeah, I'd say I agree with that. And I agree that a man will probably never be the sole lust of a woman. They just won't be as obvious about it. Um, thoughts on Kevin Samuels. I didn't really follow him, and I heard he died recently. So what are your thoughts on him? Um, so Matt W, he's a marketing master. Right? That's not who Tate is all the time, lol. So, jo- Johannes Willery asks, what are your thoughts on sexually dominant women? I think they're very cool. I think... Um, they're great. I think men should go see them. I think, like, if I was a submissive man, I would definitely be going to dominatrixes, like, all the time. Um... Yeah, I've met some of them. Like, at, like I went to Kinkfest, and I thought they were like amazing. They were they're awesome, and I know they're like extremely high in demand because there's so few of them. So, yeah. Um, Antonio, what are your thoughts on them? Antonio Nunez, greetings from Florida. I love Florida, so hi, Antonio. Um, how do you talk with a female ex-girlfriend and make it clear you don't want her in your life and have her, and have her respect that and leave you alone? Um, that's hard. Like, especially if she, you know, really wants you back. Yeah, that's, that's rough. I guess you just have to be like as direct as possible and possibly just stop you know, possibly just cut it off. Especially, yeah, you don't want her in your life. So I don't know, block her number, but yeah, that's that's rough. Seems like a probably a pretty uh bad situation there. Beautiful wig. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> um okay. IDK, your name, but your videos are really good and helps people. Keep making vids, please. Um, thanks, Trey. Uh, my name is Victoria. And if you have any, like, suggestions for a video, just put it in the comments. Um, ARS, did he just donate money? Oh, my God. Um, wow. Okay, I don't... I think... That is money. That is so embarrassing. I don't even know what that is. But if it is, wow, thank you so much. Esthesia. So, okay. Your comment is, what do you think is more attractive? A guy that comforts you and is supportive or a guy that makes you worry about your issues later? Oh, wow. Okay, that's an interesting question. Um, Personally... It's kind of like a no-brainer for me because it's like a guy that comforts you and is supportive. However, I guess I can see where you're coming from where it's like, let's say you're not in like this healthy, secure relationship or whatever, and you're just, you need to increase attraction. Um, so then like this insecurity can kind of just, you know, make her obsessed with you. Um, possibly, but could you elaborate on like worry about your issues later if, if I'm getting like what you kind of mean by that? But I will say that uh, my boyfriend, like he has learned to comfort me and be supportive. And like the first time he really started doing it in kind of like an over the top way, I kind of talked about it a little, like, in one of my videos, the DDLG video. 
But like a big part of that DDLG vibe is just being like really comforting and really supportive and kind of like babying you. And the first time he did that, it was, I don't know, hugely attractive. And now he just does it in like a more, I don't know, comfortable way where um, like when we have issues, like he'll just comfort me and it's really attractive. It's just like, I feel like in love with him after. So I don't know if that's, you know, that's in like a healthy relationship or like you want to be in the relationship and both people respect each other. If you kind of have to worry about, you know, making sure you seem higher value than she thinks you are, it could be different. Um, Let's see if Esthesia followed up. To explain in more detail, I meant if you had a bad day, um, someone that asks you why and helps you heal or someone that takes you out to forget. Someone that takes you out to forget. Oh, I see. <laughs> okay. So, like, just takes you out on the town? I mean, it could be different for different people, but I know that for me personally, um... I'm like definitely into just like that validation, acknowledgement, empathy, understanding. Like understanding is just everything to me. And like personally, I don't just forget if I go out. Like it's still on my mind. But um, it could be different for different women. But um, yeah, I know for me, it's like a definitely no brainer, like I said before. Um, yeah. All right, thank you so much again, Esthesia. I really appreciate that. Um, okay. Let's see. I don't wanna miss people's questions, so I'm like scrolling back up. Um, feels, love your vids, keep up the great content. Thank you. Um, what are your thoughts on hybristophilia, women that love serial killers? Yeah, okay, that scares me. I know it's, like, a big thing. Um, and, you know, I understand, like, the attraction to dangerous men. Like, for example, I'm reading a book about, like, bikers and, like, this biker gang. And it was funny. Like, I listened to this podcast with the author. He was just like, yeah, women were, like, always following these bikers around. I had no idea because these were some, like, ugly men who were, like, so gross and they smelled bad. Like, he didn't even understand it, but I'm like, okay, well, that's obvious, like, why they're attractive. Um, basically, they just kind of, like, radiate alpha male vibes. They radiate, like, strength and kind of, like, I can protect you. So that's kind of, like, on a deep level. I feel like what the attraction is. But then this thing about serial killers, like, ugh, I don't get it. Like, is it just an extension of what I'm saying? But like, they need an even more intense version or is it something else? I have no idea. For me, it's like incredibly creepy. And like, I had this boyfriend, he was just like into serial killers. And I thought it was like really scary. So I don't know. What do you think about it? Um, Monk Mind says, you don't have to be mean to be dominant. Yes. Obviously, so true. Omar Shogar, will you do more Q&A? Um, yeah, I will. Like, this was just the spur of a moment decision because I'm kind of bored. But as long as this is, like, interesting and not just totally boring and lame, then I will. Um, yeah. So, Shailen Negore asks, let me ask the main question. How to not get me too into tasting? Oh, God. Um, that's a big question, yes. Like, I don't, I don't know I can answer that. Let me just think about that one in the back of my mind. There's a lot to cover there. Um, feels. Why does it seem like women are more interested in men that have relationships already? Well, I mean, I think one reason is that if a man is in a relationship, then he's 
basically high value enough, if you want to use that word, to get in a relationship in the first place. So he's probably got some attractive qualities about him because the woman he's in a relation with, 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 wanted to lock him down. So, yeah. And those guys are, the guys who are like attractive to women in that way are not really that common in women's eyes. And so, I don't know, it could appear that way. It could also be like a competition thing to kind of like prove that you're better than the girl he's in a relationship with. Like um, one time I was almost kind of like tempted to just, I was, I was not going to do anything, but I was single and I met this guy and he was in a relationship with this supermodel. And he just seemed, he was one of like the coolest guys I felt like I'd ever met. Like he was just so mesmerizing. He was like a movie star, kind of like a, like a rock star. And I it did kind of have the thought like, well, if he likes me, then it's almost like I'm like better than a supermodel. So I don't know, maybe that could be like going on. Um, But yeah, there's maybe some other reasons as well. Um. What do you think? Um, so, truth bomb. How do you emotionally appeal to a woman while talking? Well, okay, it depends on what you mean by emotionally appeal. But, to be honest, I did this video on the five secrets, Dr. Burns. And anytime someone uses the five secrets on me, I can guarantee it appeals to me on like a deep emotional level. I'm just like melting. So those are a good thing to look into, I think. Okay. Um Okay. So Path of the Healing Heart says, charming guys always get the girl's attention at my job, but I think that's just the environment. I just don't fit into a warehouse job personality-wise. I'm not really quick with the jokes and charm. Well, I can just say I relate to that. Like, I am just so bad, like, at, in any kind of, like, situation like that. I'm not good with, like, the jokes and charms either. I just, yeah, definitely not where I shine. Maybe you shine in a more intellectual avenue, like having your own YouTube channel or or just one-on-one -on -one conversations. Like, I know that's kind of more my speed. Ronald Sunset says, sorry for your friend. Thank you for saying that. And hello to you. Thanks for being here too. Um, um thank you, Manuel. <laughs> You're still here? Um, well, it took men to do suicide to have your attention to quiet shy guys. Like, yeah, like, I agree, Joseph. Like, I was, you know, interested before that. But I do agree, like, it's a huge blind spot. And I feel like so many women just do not even know quiet shy guys exist. I talked about that in the blind spot video, but, like, I really think it's true. Like, they, they do not know it's a thing. Because I hear just on TikTok all the time, girls talking about guys have all the power in dating. Um, and, and they're talking about, you know, certain guys, but they, they're just not seeing everyone else. So, yeah, it sucks. And that's why I'm trying to basically give you guys tips, all the ones I can. Obviously, I can't solve everything. Um. Shot says, my only YouTube video today. Okay, that's, I guess you mean like watching this live? That's awesome, All right? Okay. Um, can you elaborate why Mussolini's wife stayed with him until the very end, even though she knew death was upon them? I don't know that story, but that's like really intense. Okay. Um, what do you think of the about the proverbial saying, absence make the heart grow fonder when it comes to relationships? 
Um, yeah, like, I think it's obviously true, but I also think, like, there's other ways to make a girl like you besides just distance, but uh, distance is a good one. Um, Ivan says, I just arrived and don't have a question. I just want to support you. Keep on shining. Thank you. Jarmel says, hey. Um, um, Decoder says, I'm well endowed, but I don't know how to tell girls that in a way which sparks attraction. Okay. Don't, don't tell girls that. You don't need to tell girls that. That's not going to spark attraction in them. Like, uh, it's not, it's like you just told a girl, yeah, like I have, you know, eight inches or 10 inches or something. They're not just going to want to sleep with you just because of that. Um, maybe some will. Okay. Maybe, maybe, but in general, that's not just like this get out of jail free card. Like they're just going to jump on you because of that. Um, there would have to be a lot more than just that. It is a good thing, but it's not just the only thing. Like, you know, just pull out like your FBI card or something. It's like, yeah, here's my size. And they're just like, okay, you're in. So, yeah. I mean, if you get in a situation where you're sleeping with them, it will spark attraction, probably. But if you just tell them like straight up, it might not. And probably won't. Um, silent type, if the guy is good looking. Um, yeah, maybe you're right about that. Maybe that is. Um, well, it's definitely a bonus if he's good looking. Yeah, well, I'll have to think about that. Maybe, maybe that is, maybe that does negate what I said. Um, good says, hey, babe, I love your call of the void video. Thank you. The vortex. I appreciate that. Um, okay. What do you see? Um, okay, so Voodoo Cobblestone says, I don't get a serious feeling for any girl. Any girl I have sex with, I lose interest to even talk to her again. So because of that, I'm not able to get a long-term girlfriend. What should I do? So, okay, why is that? And I mean, do you do you have any thoughts or ideas on why that might be? Um, like, why wouldn't you want to keep having sex with her? Because you got now a girl who wants to have sex with you. Um, could be like so many reasons. Um, yeah. So feel free to type your thoughts. So, what do you think about Open Relationship Model by Caleb Jones, where he allows his girlfriend or wife to have side fuckboys? But I'm sure a lot of guys may only allow one-sided open relationship, double standard. Yeah, like if the guy sleeps with girls on the side and doesn't allow his girlfriend to do it, yeah, it's total double standard. And I think it's great, this open relationship model. So he allows his girlfriend or wife to have side people. So does he as well? Or is it just them? Is it kind of like a cuckolding thing? Um, or just like an open relationship, like you just feel secure? Um, either way, I think it's awesome. And I think it's great that you guys, that in a relationship, you can have the ability to also explore. And also, you know, experience other people. And yeah, I agree, it is a double standard if a guy thinks that's like wrong for a woman to do. Crazy. Um, Rupert's mixtape says, is there such a thing as too much sex in a relationship? In my opinion, there is not. However, it can cause problems because you can just focus on your sexual connection and never develop like an emotional connection because 
as I like to say, you just can get like sex brain, which is just like this blissful feeling of just everything is perfect. And meanwhile, kind of like incompatibilities and things are building up under the surface. Um, and you don't really have like the skills to talk them out because everything's just so blissful all the time. And yeah, you're just in this uh, happiness bubble. So no, there's not. However, you know, you one person might start feeling like kind of, I don't know, like, do you like me for more than sex? Um, so little things can bubble up, but in general, it's an amazing thing. And I think it's awesome because there's a lot of connecting you can do during sex. And there's a lot of ways you can get closer and strengthen the relationship during sex and have fun together. So yeah, it's generally very, very good. Um, okay, Jefferson says, do you like people who look like me? Like your profile picture is so small, I can't see it. So yeah, um, unfortunately I can't tell, but Okay. Okay. So, Matt W says, okay. Um, Lakshay Taneha says, okay. Um, can you guys still hear me? I, it might have frozen. Okay, I'm, I'm back. Okay. Um, just bear with me for one second. Something weird is happening. Okay. Okay, I'm having a problem here. Everything's like freezing, so just please bear with me here. Okay. Okay, maybe I have to restart or something you guys are saying. Hopefully, like, all the comments will save because I feel really bad, like, missing out on all of them. But it seems like it's freezing, so maybe I have to end it. All right. Um, you know what? I'll be back in a little while because this is, like, really fun. But everything's freezing, so I think I have to just, like, restart. Um, even if it freezes, video and still keep talking. Audio tends to have less lag. Okay, everyone's saying I'm good, so yeah, I really do need a moderator. Um, okay, so like basically the, the questions keep freezing. So all right. 
this is so crazy. All right, guys. I don't know what to do because the, the questions are all frozen. So I'm going to end it, but I'm going to come back. So if you're still around, feel free to come back. And sorry if I just totally, I'm not going to see your questions. Like, hopefully it will save everything. But yeah, I got to end it because this is like really bad. All right, bye.